Hey, welcome to Homer, Alaska. I am Lisa Langell and I'm going to talk to you about how to photograph from a boat because it can be tricky and there are certain settings that you need. And I'm here today with Bay Excursions and Carl who's going to give us a birding tour and we're going to photograph mammals and birds from the boat. Tip number one, when you're out in the field and you are photographing from a boat, stabilization is so important. I'll talk in a minute about how we can stabilize our bodies, but stabilizing your images with your camera is super important. So first of all, I'm using a Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens, and along the side are three stabilization options. You wanna choose mode three, which puts the most stabilization possible in your lens, so that you can actually photograph the birds and even though you're on water rocking and rolling a little bit, this will be helpful. This is not necessarily the best for panning, but it would be great for a shot like this where I'm gonna go up and photograph the kittiwakes on the rocks. Tip two, the settings in your camera really need to be correct for photographing out here in the rocky waves. Although it's calm here in this little bay at the moment, it can quickly change. What you wanna do is have your shutter speed up around 2,000, maybe 2,500th of a second, so that you can capture the action in the birds and compensate for any of your own movement or the movement in the boat. The other thing that I like to do is shoot at f8 most of the time because it'll give you a little forgiveness if your focus is a little bit off and you wanna make sure that those eyes are in sharp and really beautifully done. So you wanna make sure that you have f8. That for me works great. As far as ISO goes, I use auto ISO because I want to control my shutter speed, I want to control my aperture, and everything else is about the light that's available to you. <clears throat> so when I use ISO, I put it on auto and I shoot in manual mode. But another option if you don't want to do all that would be to shoot in shutter priority and then make sure your shutter speed's up around 2500 at the most and you also want to make sure that your exposure compensation is something you're familiar with. Tip three, I'm here in Kachemak Bay, Alaska, outside of Homer, and I'm photographing kittiwakes. And these black-legged kittiwakes have been spotted as far north as near the North Pole. They're some of the farthest north birds that you're ever gonna see, but they're here nesting. Most of the rest of the year when they're not nesting, they're out at sea. So they're a really fun bird to photograph, but they can also be tricky when we have motion and you're trying to stabilize. So in addition to setting the settings on your lens, you need to make sure your camera settings are correct. Now, some of you have image stabilization built into the camera as well. Use that if you have it. But in addition, set your settings. I particularly like to use manual and then I use shutter uh, speed of around 2000 to 2500. I then use my aperture around f8 to give you a little bit of room for focus if you just miss the focus a little bit when birds are flying by. And then I like to use auto ISO. Now I know that can be kind of a questionable for some folks, but the reason why I like to do so is I might be photographing a bird here that pans quickly by and depending on the light and the background, sometimes your ISO may need to change. It's just as easy to leave it on auto and you can certainly set an upper limit if you want to do so if you're not comfortable with the higher ISOs of your particular brand and model of camera. But right now I'm going to go ahead and photograph Kitty Wake. Tip number four, or should I say tippy number four. Okay, when you're photographing on a boat, it can be unstable and you wanna make sure that you have one foot in front of you, one foot planted perpendicular in the back so that you can ride out the waves and still capture your shots by keeping your camera very steady. You have to almost be your own balance and really find the rhythm with the waves. Tip number five, one of the most important things that I can recommend is to keep your gear safe in addition to you. And so I've got a neck strap for my camera because what you want is to have a hand free for the boat and a hand for your camera. And if you have to do any last minute moving around or anybody bumps into you, the last thing you want is your camera to go overboard. And while you're at it, if you're taking any cell phone pictures or videos, I love having a little strap for my phone as well. So I can just drop that, get my camera ready and take a shot 
and then have it instantly ready to take some video or anything else I might want to do. So those are my tips for photographing in a boat. I want to say thank you to Carl for bringing me out here and you're going to love it the next time you go out in a boat in Homer or wherever you may be.